it certainly is a cool time to have this as your specialty, says Maria Holman, associate professor of political science at Tulane University, who is studying gender stereotypes in political matchups between women. Races with two women have been so rare until very recently that there really hasn't been much real-world research at all, says Tessa Ditonto, assistant professor at Iowa State University, who specializes in gender and psychology in American politics. Nearly all the research to this point has been theoretical, and there isn't even much of that. This is a great chance to learn what we've had no data for. While knowledge gained from these current races won't be complete until they are run, already it seems clear that the conventional wisdom that gender ceases to be an issue in a race between two women is wrong. Just because two women are running doesn't mean gender doesn't matter, says Kelly Dittmar, assistant research professor at the Center for American Women and Politics, part of the Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rutgers University. She says that as recently as three years ago she was told by one researcher, you can make the argument that the issue of gender was removed because you have two women running for governor. But watching women navigate this year's races, Holman says, illustrates that gender still matters. It just matters in different ways than in a contest where you have a woman running against a man. Among the preliminary takeaways from those who are paying academic attention, Democrats stress the presumed female trait of compassion while Republicans stress the presumed male trait of strength even when both candidates are female. In Wisconsin, for instance, Senator Tammy Baldwin, the incumbent and the only openly lesbian senator, is running ads showing her surrounded by young children and discussing the harm done by repealing the Affordable Care Act. Her challenger, Leah Bookmere, in contrast, came out of the campaign gate with an ad showing her sitting alone at a table with a handgun in front of her, talking about the guts she will show standing up to threats around the world and at home. In Arizona, for instance, Martha McSally who is leading Kelly Ward in the Republican primary for Senate and is expected to face Democrat Kirsten Sinema should she win the primary on Tuesday launched her campaign with an ad that resembled the movie Top Gun, all metallic music and quick cuts of her piloting a combat aircraft. That she underscored her point in some very female ways grow a pair of ovaries is how she describes her message to many in Congress is essentially a tweak on an established mim. But voters perceive a woman's toughness differently when the race is against another woman, so the above assumption might not hold when all the research is in. When research subjects were presented with fictional articles about fictional candidates for governor in a research study from the University of Oklahoma and the University of Washington, they preferred the one who presented as a mix of traditional masculine and feminine traits, as opposed to the one who presented as more stereotypically masculine. In a race between two women, the Republican candidate faces a more complicated challenge. Holman notes that voters make certain assumptions about candidates based on such categories as party and gender. Republicans, in general, are assumed to be tougher and more conservative than Democrats. Men, in general, are thought to be tougher and more conservative than women. Each candidate then uses those assumptions as a foundation on which to build a winning coalition. For Democratic women, the challenge for them is that they have two pieces of information that cue voters to see them as more liberal party identification and gender identification, Holman says. For Republican women it is the opposite. Her party label says conservative but her gender label says that she is liberal. As a result, she continues. A female Democratic candidate can move to the right in the general election because her base will automatically assume, from her gender and party cues, that she still speaks for them. Republican women, on the other hand, not only have to convince independents and Democrats that she is not too conservative, which is her party cue, but also reassure members of her own party that she's not too liberal, which is her gender cue. In a race between two women, she says, that gives a Democrat more room to move and maneuver. The long-standing taboo against running attack ads against a female opponent is likely dead. This has long been a fundamental truth for men who are running against women, because there's a concern about men looking like a bully, Ditmar says. It is increasingly less true, 
see the ads by Nancy Pelosi's Republican opponent, John Kelly, comparing the House Minority Leader to the Wicked Witch of the West, and, it seems, not at all true in contests between women. Women are just as likely to go negative against each other as men are to go negative against men, Ditmar says, and in this election cycle so far there has been no outcry or backlash. You know, in Oklahoma, all of our governors have been men. So none of them have been mothers, Askins responded. I think most of them have done a pretty good job so I don't think that's a criteria. Fallen won that race with 60% of the vote and is currently completing her second term. In their study, titled Two's a Crowd, the authors theorize that this is because our stereotypes are being activated by more women running simultaneously. So what does that mean when the women in question are running against each other? That's one of the many things this year might help us figure out, Daitanto says.